Hello, I'm Raymond Sims, and welcome to the MLB pregame show on the Coliseum Sports Network. We have fourth round action out of the Western region, as we will have the Seattle Mariners taking on the San Francisco Giants from AT&T Park. Now, as I alluded to in the pregame show for the first game of this doubleheader, uh, the fourth round is kind of interesting for teams in the loser's bracket. For instance, the Mariners and Giants, whoever wins this game, will now will then move on to take on the Angels, who lost a winner's bracket game against the Astros. Whoever wins that game will then advance to the regional championship. So if it's the Mariners or the Giants that happen to beat the Angels and then take on the the Astros in Houston, then that will be uh, three games in one round. But it's all still the fourth round. So just to clear that up there. But the Giants come in off of a win over the Padres to eliminate them, while the Mariners come in after winning against the Twins, winning up in Seattle. They were able to get a home game out of the deal. And that will lead us to a, a rematch of the first round game that we saw. That one was during the daytime. This one's going to be against the evening or is this one's going to be in the evening. Our pitching matchup will be James Paxton for Seattle, taking on Ryan Vogel's song for San Francisco. So let's take a look at the lineups here for both sides. For the Mariners, leading off will be center fielder Austin Jackson. Batting second will be left fielder Dustin Ackley. Batting third will be second baseman Robinson Cano. Batting fourth will be the third baseman Kyle Seager. Batting fifth will be the first baseman Logan Morrison. Batting 6th will be the catcher, Mike Zanino. Batting 7th will be the right fielder, Andy Chavez. Batting 8th will be the shortstop, Brad Miller. And batting ninth will be the starting pitcher, James Paxton. And for San Francisco, leading off will be the center fielder, Angel Pagan. Batting 2nd will be the right fielder, Hunter Pence. Batting 3rd will be the catcher, Buster Posey. Batting fourth will be the third baseman, Pablo Sandoval. Batting fifth will be the left fielder, Mike Morse. Batting sixth will be the first baseman, Adam Duvall. Batting seventh will be the shortstop, Brandon Crawford. Batting eighth will be the second baseman, Joe Panic. And batting ninth will be the pitcher, Ryan Vogelsong. So before we head out to San Francisco, in the city by the bay, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Coliseum Sports Network here on YouTube for all the best fictional sports action. Also be sure to check out the official website simscoliseum.com as well as the Sims Coliseum social media channels on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr. So it's going to be a cool night in the China Basin and I'll be on the call. Don't go anywhere. Coliseum Baseball Tournament action is coming up next on the Coliseum Sports Network. So glad to have you along for the ride here. I am Raymond Sims back on the call after a bit of a hiatus there in the third round. Seattle and San Francisco are ready to play, and here's a look at the Mariners' starting lineup is set up. Ackley and Cano are all in the top of the first inning. They'll be taking on the righty, 
Ryan Vogelsong. 36 years of age, 7 and 8, record 3.71 ERA in 2014, making his first appearance, of course, in the Coliseum Baseball Tournament. Here's a look at the defense. And we are about ready for action here from San Francisco. Here is the leadoff hitter, Austin Jackson. Notice that highlighted 337 OBP from 2013. Pitch a four seamer in there for a strike, and that's with the Mariners. Jackson has a 308 on base percentage in 12 games with the team since joining at the trade deadline. Take a curveball, strike two. His on base percentage on the year is 384 after, or I'm going 330 100 games of his season. Here's the out. It's a curveball outside. Low 60s. Going to be around there for much of the evening. But that has not deterred this faithful Giants crowd to show up. Jackson puts this it is Pagan. There's out number one. So here's a look at Vogel Song's repertoire. Not a lot will come at you fast, relatively fast. But it still gets the job done. So here is the left fielder, Dustin Apple. See if he can get some early offense going against Ryan Vogelson. Actually, gets a piece of that one, fouls off. There are five. California teams in the Western region, and only eight slots, so it's not surprising that the Mariners have mostly faced California teams. Exactly. Fouls off the 1 1. This is the second time the Mariners have faced the Giants, and it's the first time in the tournament that a team is, that a matchup has repeated it. Kind of comes with the territory of a double elimination, a loser's bracket team can most certainly work their way back against the team they started off with. The Mariners have only faced a non-California team once. That was in Seattle against the Twins, and they were able to eliminate them. That's evidenced by the fact that the Mariners are here. Ackley swings and misses and strikes out. That's number one for Vogelsong, and out number two here in the top of the first inning. So far, Vogel's song has been no nonsense. Ackley was able to foul off a couple of pitches. Otherwise, Vogel's song had no problem dealing. Here's Robinson Cano up at the plate for the first time today. He'll be looking to get some offense going this evening. He'll take a two-seamer outside for strike one. No, pops this one up in the air. And Posey is able to track it down for out number three. He won't have to walk far to the dugout, but it's three up, three down to start off the game. And it is the Giants' first time on offense when we come back after this. Welcome back. Here's a look at Bruce Bochy, and here's a look at Bruce Bochy's lineup. 
The law firm of Pagan, Pence, and Posey will lead things off. They will be taking on another guy with a P in his, to start off his last name, James Paxton. James Paxton has only made four starts in 2014, but he has a 2-0 and record. And here's a look at the defensive lineup presented by Majestic for the Mariners. With that, we're about ready to go here with the bottom of the first inning. Here's Angel Pagan, center fielder. Debuted in San Francisco's last game against San Diego when he came off of the disabled list. The team that both of these teams are working towards, the Houston Astros, are rumored to be getting a key piece back for them as well as Pagan will chip this one towards first and the put out is made by Morrison for out number one. The Astros who have been dominating here in the Coliseum tournament, they're the eighth seed but they've been taking care of business against all their opponents. They're getting back a key piece in center fielder Dexter Fowler, should be in the coming days. They'll be ready to go by the time the regional championship rolls around. It's just a matter of what team is going to join the Astros in Houston. First pitch a ball to Hunter Pence. Up lands two balls one strike. This one popped up. Zanino doesn't have to move far. It's just a matter of catching it on the way down. And he does. So Cano popped up to the catcher to end the first inning. And that's out number two here for Hunter Pence. And that'll bring up that very catcher, Buster Posey. Two outs here for James Paxton. Looking to put away Posey. Cutter inside, two balls and one strike. I'm not sure if it's just the style of play of the Giants or if it's the park because the Giants played all home games. But we've had some low scoring affairs here at AT&T Park, more so than any other park we've been in. We've really only been in a handful due to the home field advantages held by the higher seeds. We've been in Comerica Park, we've been in Oakland Coliseum, we've been in Miller Park. We've been in Angel Stadium of Anaheim. We were at PNC Park once. Been in Rogers Center a couple times. The list goes on as Posey checks swings for a strikeout. So three up and three down on both halves of the inning, and it is scoreless heading into the top of the second. Kyle Seeger, the third baseman, leading off here. Rocking the road alternates. The Mariners have pretty much uh, batted around in terms of their uniform. They wore the road gray the first time they were here. They wore the alternate teal uniform when they were across the bay in Oakland. They wore their home whites against Minnesota. 
Now they are wearing the navy blues on their return trip to San Francisco. 1-1 to Seeger. Pitch jams him and he fouls it back. That one fouled back as well. It'll be interesting to see the, the decision made for the Mariners if they are to advance. If they're going to revert back to other uniforms, if they're going to start breaking out the throwbacks as a number of teams have already. Vogelsong lays down a second strikeout. And so he seems to be ahead in the boat race now in the strikeout boat race against James Paxton, 2-1. to one. Take a look at it on show motion, just a very smooth delivery for Vogelsong, the veteran not having any problems here early on as Logan Morrison steps up to the plate. Zanino on deck. And if Morrison or Zanino are able to reach, Indy Chavez in the seventh spot will come up. First pitch, a strike to the former Marlin, Logan Morrison. This one hit, rounded up by Crawford with ease, but on the receiving end, Duvall not able to collect it. That may very well be an E3. That's what I'd call it, but we'll see if it's an E6. Here's Mike Zanino. It'll be an E6. Throwing error, not a fielding error. And Zanino's going to look to advance some base runners. This one hit high in the air. But under it is Morse. And that will force Morrison to retreat all the way back to first for out number two. So besides that error on Crawford. It's been easy going here for Ryan Vogel's song so far. Here's Indy Chavez up at the plate. And he'll foul back the first pitch. With the arrival of Chris Norfia from San Diego, Lloyd McClendon has now been able to platoon that right field spot. So Norfia starts when it's, when it's right-handed pitches. And Chavez on the second pitch, grounds it out to end the inning. Still scoreless, only an error on the board, heading into the bottom of the second. Baxton went three up, three down, and he's gonna see if he can do it again here in the bottom of the second to keep pace with Ryan Vogel's song. But the first person he's gonna have to do it against here in the second is the Kung Fu Panda Pablo Sandoval. First pitch to Sandoval, a changeup for ball one. Not to look too far ahead here in the bottom of the second considering there's plenty of game left. Whichever one of these teams advances, if they're able to beat the Angels, they'll be in a pretty interesting spot if Sandoval fouls this one off. Because in this game, the number four starters have come out to play. It's expected that the number five starter would go against the Angels. That would allow the number one starter to get the nod in the regional championship against the Astros' number four starter. At least that's assuming that the Astros choose to bring out their number four man. These, not, these games are not played on a day-by-day -day basis. So it's not like teams have to adhere to going through the rotation. But of course, it's just better to do so. And every team so far has chosen to do it. Whoever wins this game, if they're able to beat the Angels, could be able to bring out their best guy. That may give them the advantage as they'll be on the road in a park that's 
leans towards the pitchers. Unless you're a righty that pulls and has a lot of power. I'm referring, of course, to the Crawford boxes in left field. Full count here to Sandoval. Paxton trying to put him away. Won't do it on that pitch. That one fouled back. Here's the payoff pitch again. Check swing, and the umpire says he went around. And there's strikeout number two. Starting pitchers are back at two strikeouts each. Here's the lefty, Mike Morse. He was the hero the first time the Mariners came here and played the Giants as he hit a walk-off home run. I think a curveball here. A walk-off home run in extra innings. Right over into McCovey Cove. Now he'll be tasked with just getting on base. Five batters in, and a Giant has not been able to pull that off. Adam Duvall's due up next. Base is empty, 0-2 count. Here's the pitch to Morse. Inner half of the plate. Strikeout number three for James Paxton. Paxton dealing early. So here is Adam Duvall. He's only played 15 games in the regular season this year. And he'll take a four-seamer. Native of Louisville, Kentucky. Went to high school in nearby Shively. Went to college at the University of Louisville. Drafted by the Giants in 2010. Take a curveball. He worked his way through the system. Finally got called up. And made his debut with the Giants on June 26th of this season. This one fouled off. He eventually went back down to Fresno. But now he's worked his way back up in the face of injuries as the team needs him to fill in at first base. One two count to Duvall. Pitch outside ball two on the changeup. Down in Triple A Fresno, where he's been where he spent all the time that he hasn't been in San Francisco. He's batting 296 with 26 homers and 84 RBIs. So yeah, he was due for a call up. But we'll see what he can do here at the major league level. He's facing a full count to James Paxton, who has struck out three consecutive Giants and is looking for number four. We saw this happen with Sam Dyson for the Marlins against Detroit in the first game of this doubleheader. Nope, can't retire him. And Paxton, after striking out three straight, allows his first base run. Only a third of the way from the record nine straight strikeouts committed by Doug Fister back when he was a Tiger. Actually just saw Doug Fister pitch. Quite dominant, but in the end, the Tigers were able to pull out the win over the Nationals. Here's Brandon Crawford, the shortstop. He already takes a pitch, one ball, no strike. He's dealing with Duvall at first and two outs in a scoreless game. Puts this one in play, but hooking foul. Oh, drops right there in the corner. If that one was fair, that would have been nothing but trouble. Let's see if Crawford can get a better piece here as Duvall's going for it, stealing second. He's out. So we'll have to deal with Brandon Crawford later. He'll get a fresh new at bat as Adam Duvall's caught stealing, still scoreless after two in San Francisco. Leading off for the Mariners. 
Here's the shortstop, Brad Miller, for the Mariners. Leading off the third inning. First pitch, a curveball lofted in for strike one in a half of the play. Chris Taylor has come up through the Mariners organization and has been looked to to possibly replace Brad Miller as the everyday shortstop. But in the meantime, McClendon decides to go with Miller for today. It'll probably be a different firepower as opposed to defense, both very good on defense. But we'll see if Brad Miller can help his team get the victory here on the road and avenge that loss that they had back in the first round that sent them into the loser's bracket in the first place. The Giants fell into the loser's bracket after being shut out here at home against the Houston Astros. This one hit to Crawford. He's able to make a play of it after committing an error back in the previous inning. So that's out number one. Here comes the starting pitcher, James Paxton. First pitch to Pax, a two seam. James Paxton, born in Richmond, British Columbia. Went to secondary school, as they call it up there, in Latin or British Columbia, before going and playing college ball. The University of Kentucky came into the Mariners system in 2010. He's been uh, at the major league level for two years. He's made a total of eight. So he's going to be surpassing that four this season at some point. In terms of batting, he's only made two plate appearances. Walked once, struck out the other. He has yet to step up to the plate for the Mariners in 2014, and he probably won't the way that the Mariners' schedule is set up. So he's going to get his free swings now, just not on that pitch as he had to move out of the way of the curveball. 2-2 Two -two count from Vogelsong to Paxton with one out in the empty bases. Paxton able to foul that one off. Austin Jackson will come back up to the plate to lead off the top of the, the lineup. But Paxton not ready to go just yet. No. Fastball inside, count full. So Vogelsong, oddly enough, having the most trouble against another pitcher. Here's the 3-2. Fouled off. And that one got aerial there. It's just now landing in the back of the first level. Let's try again. Payoff pitch to Paxton. This one high. Sailing. Pence should be under it, and he is in foul territory in that little nook just behind the Mariners' bullpen. Hunter Pence is very familiar, about as familiar as you can get, with the weird little quirks about AT&T Park. He plays right field very well, shows a very high IQ for such a unique ballpark. So that's two outs, and here's Austin Jackson taking a strike. Both of these teams fighting to stay alive. The winner 
we'll head on down to Anaheim where we are scheduled to have our first night game in Anaheim. I already have one match matchup set out of the Eastern region where the Brewers will be playing the Tigers in Detroit for a right to take on the Cubs, another eight seed that is ran their way through the tournament. Jackson bloops this one into center and it'll drop in front of Pagan. And that is a base hit with two outs here in the top of the third. That is, with two outs, two and two-thirds into this game for Ryan Vogelsong, the first hit that he's given up. So here's Dustin Ackley, the left fielder. He struck out his last time up. He's going to look to do better here and see if he can advance Jackson and see if the Mariners can get a two-out rally going. Here's the pitch to Ackley. Just outside with the circle change, ball one. As I said before, with all the turnover that the Mariners faced at the trade deadline with the arrival of DeNorfia and Jackson, Dustin Axley is the only one that hasn't been affected. Steal attempt, and just like the, end, the bottom of the second, the top of the third ends with a player caught stealing. So we'll see Axley later, but in the meantime, it's still scoreless in San Francisco. There's the shortstop, Brandon Crawford. First time up today. Recorded an error. Back in the second inning on the defensive side. First pitch Crawford sees, he smacks it foul. Just a bit too early on the swing. Sounded like really good contact. It just didn't go fair. Let's see if we can do better here. Pitch to Paxson, fouls it back. We've had dueling pitchers so far today. It's just something about AT&T Park that has been bringing out the best in all of the pitchers that step up to the mound. Crawford jammed on that pitch, fouled off. I mean, you had Scott Feldman come in here. He looked very good. Tim Stoltz, or Tim Lincecum and Eric Stoltz, not, not combined, but both of them had very good games. This one's fouled off. Most runs scored in the tournament here at AT&T Park is four by the Astros when they were able to get that win. Otherwise, some of the lowest scores we've seen all tournament have taken place within this diamond. 1-2 count here to Brandon Crawford. Breaking ball fools him, falls into the well. There against the backstop. There's another 1-2 and two served up by Paxton. And that one's high for ball two. It's Crawford, Panic, and Vogelsong all do up as Paxton has been three up and three downing his way through the first two innings. This is actually Crawford's second time up. But his first time with the result, and it's one he doesn't like as he foul tips it for strikeout number four. Fourth strikeout for James Paxton's out number one, and here's Joe Panic, the New Yorker, stepping up to the plate. When Pagan was out, Panic batted second. While Pence led off, Panic thinks but bunt too late. That's strike one. But with the return of Angel Pagan, Panic has worked his way back down to the bottom of the lineup. man who was really phased out with the return of Pagan, Gregor Blanco. 
be fair, Blanco has been struggling as of late. He's done so-so here in the tournament. But in the regular season, he had been falling into a slump. Lost his number two starting position, uh, starting position in the order. Working his way in the bottom until Bochi felt that he was back to his old self. But he's not starting here. And Panic grounds out 2-3 for out number two. So that will bring up Ryan Vogelsong. Vogelsong has gotten more opportunities at the plate than the American leaguer James Paxton. So we'll see if that additional experience will lead to any offense here. And once again, we have two outs on the third batter in the inning. Vogelsong swings on the changeup. He's already in the hole 0-2. Vogel song is 5 for 42 for a 119 average here in 2014, and you saw he was 0.69 last season. So, an improvement. Paxton won't take him down in three pitches. But we'll see what he does on the fourth one of this at bat. Ooh, high. Two balls, two strikes. High and fast, too. That one breaking into the mid 90s and that one fell off swing and a miss that is strikeout number five for James That'll do it for the third inning. Still scoreless. Raymond Sims here from the tournament. Back at it here from the fourth round all the way until the final pitch of the championship baseball or the Coliseum Baseball Championship Series. 74. In the first game, I'd like to thank Matt Veskersian, Steve Lyons, and Eric Carrolls for filling in there for the third round. Dustin Ackley getting a fresh count to lead off the fourth after his teammate Austin Jackson was caught stealing. We've had two separate caught stealings. Adam Duvall went down back in the second, Jackson in the third. So the catchers are not having any of it today. We'll see if either Bruce Bochy or Lloyd McClendon make their runners go moving forward. But for now, it's a 1-2 count to lead off the fourth. That one lands in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. As I said at the end of the third, Ackley struck out his last time up. Vogelsong now has two to Paxton's five. So he's got some ground to make up. He's going to do it there. Third base umpire says he went. That's the third strikeout for Vogelsong. That's out number one. Robinson Cano popped up to the catcher his last time up. You saw that at least he's worth quite a bit to his team in terms of wins above replacement. You switch him out for just any old Joe, and you're losing seven wins right there. Here's the old one to Cano, and he'll foul that one back.
Foul another. Cano already in the hole 0 2. Take a curve ball inside. Global Song already 50 pitches in with one out in the top of the fourth. So Vogel Song's done well at the expense of his pitch count. At this rate, he'll be at the 100 mark with two outs in the sixth. Two two count to Cano. He'll take it, ball three. Count is full. Three two. Just a full count. Cano making contact again. Very good contact, but fouled off. No fouls this one off, too. There's another souvenir. That one coming at the fans faster than the last one. This one put in play, heading into right field. Pence trying to chase it down, and he gets it at the warning track for out number two. And as I said before, Pence knows how to play this field. And he does it right there. Boy, did he have to get on his horse for that one. But here's Kyle Seeger. Struck out his first time. Right? Only one hit allowed so far by Vogelsong, and that was off the single by Austin Jackson. Another base runner was conceded back in the second, but that was, reach, that was Logan Morrison reaching on an air. He was left stranded. Ooh, 1-1 one, one to Seeger. Pulled on the circle chain. Bounds that one off. Chest makes contact with it. I'll take the curveball, two balls, two strikes. Full crowd here in San Francisco hoping to cheer on their Giants. Two seamer at the knees. If Seeger's able to get on base, Logan Morrison will be due up next. Payoff pitch to Seeger. Makes contact, but Veers just fouled. Seeger reaches. He'll go down on strikes. That's number four for Vogelsong. Another three up, three down inning from San Francisco. The pitchers have been dealing. Pagan leading off. Bottom of the fourth inning is Paxton throws a mid-90s fastball high and outside.
five strikeouts for James Paxton. Going to look to add on here in the bottom of the fourth. Only one hit between both teams. And only three men have found first base between both sides. Lagan thinks bunt too late, strike two. Of those three, none of them have been able to make it to second base. Two have tried to steal second, and both have been caught. Lagan putting this one in play. No, sir. Easily into the glove of Chavez for out number one. Take a look at that again. Not a lot of movement necessary. Chavez able to round it up with his glove pretty easy. So here's Hunter Pence. He popped up to the catcher his last time up, and it was way up there, but Zanino had no problem with it. Pence gets this one up in the air, fouls off. This one will be in fair territory, but into the glove of Ackley for out number two. Here's Buster Posey up to the plate, struck out his last time up. He'll see if he'll be the one to get the first hit for the Giants. First pitch. Check swing. Strike one. In the all-time series between the Mariners and the Giants, the Mariners lead 14 to 11. Despite the Giants being around since pretty much forever and the Mariners being around since the late 70s, they did not start playing each other until 1997. First game was on June 17th. That was a 4-3 win for the Giants at Candlestick. But from there, I think the Mariners have taken things back. They have won the series every year since 2000. This one in the air. Diving catch by Indy Chavez, and that's how we'll end the inning. Great catch. That'll retire the side. Another three-up, three-down inning for James Paxson. Logan Morrison going to start things off here for the Mariners. Fouls that one back. No balls and two strikes. Up oh, in the umpire. He took a hit on that one. On that fouled off pitch by Morrison. Let's look at this again. On show motion. Not going to be pretty, folks. Past the mask of Posey. And right at the ump. That's why they have a map line, so we'll continue play. And Morrison reaches on that one badly. 
There's another strikeout for Ryan Vogelsong. He now has five, and he's, yep, he's caught up with James Paxton in the K race. It's just been a wonderful pitching performance from both James Paxton and Ryan Vogelsong. And we'll see who will be the one to break first. Somebody's got to come out with a win, no matter how long it takes. First pitch to Zanino in there for a strike. He flew out the left his last time up. Cutter inside. Quite inside. One ball, one strike. Ball drops in too low. Ball two. This one hit over the glove of Duval into right field. And there is the second hit of the game for either side. So Ryan Vogelsong, he's been dealing. He has five strikeouts. He's only given up two hits. But through four and a third, he's racked up the pitches. So now Zanino's on first. Here's Andy Chavez again. And a hit and run. That will, that will advance Zanino. So out number two, but now with the runner on second for the first time this entire game. And here is Brad Miller. Taking a curve ball inside for ball one. This one will get past Panic, and that will bring Zanino home. So a very elementary single into center field gives Zanino enough wiggle room. And so there it is, an RBI single for Brad Miller, and we finally have a run. Here in the top of the fifth. First pitch of fastball in the outer half of the plate to the pitcher, James Paxton, for strike one. His job will probably be simple, just trying to advance Miller. may not have very good batting averages these days but that doesn't mean that you don't expect them to contribute to the offense which is the reason why pitchers still hit in the National League 1-1 outside on the cutter Paxton gets this one in the air, won't be challenged. At least, okay. I was going to say at least it did seem like it, but Morse, he was trying to make his way over there, but it fell a little too deep into the stand. And there was that tarpon play. 2 2 count to Paxton. I'll take a four seamer high on the side. If Paxton's able to reach as we have a full count, Austin Jackson will be up next this game for the Mariners.
Runners going, but rounded up by Panic. Not a problem. So the Mariners come out with one run there in the top of the fifth. Will that be enough for the victory? We'll find out. We're halfway home. We're halfway home here in San Francisco. Pablo Sandoval comes up to the plate. It is a one to nothing game. May not seem a lot, but hits at least up until the last half inning seem to be at a premium. James Paxton still throwing hitless ball 66 pitches into his outing. One taken for strike two. Sandoval for James Paxton. Paxton still has five strikeouts to his name. Might be looking for number two. Oh, put in play, collected by Miller, and the throw a bit high, but still into the glove of Morrison for out number one. So here's Mike Morse. As I said before, he was the hero that hit the walk-off home run against the Mariners the first time. But we'll see if he can get the first hit here for the Giants. Four and two-thirds in, have yet to get a hit. Seamer high, low 90s, two balls and no strike. We're not seeing the same strikeout power that we saw for the first third of the game, but Paxton still putting these pitches in places that forced the Giants to put it in play, allowed the Mariners fielders to take care of business. Paxton understanding that he doesn't have to do this other guys around him that can hold him down defensively if need be. For instance, Morris pops out in foul territory to Morrison for out number two. Here's the line score. That one is the loneliest number right there. That is the only run that has been scored in Bounce in the top of the fifth off an RBI single by Brad Miller. Here's Adam Duvall. He walked his last time up. That is the only time that a base runner for the Giants has gotten on so far. That was back in the second. All one's the count. First pitch a strike. Or Seamer inside. Duvall is getting the start at first base as he did against San Diego because Brandon Belt, suffering from a concussion, went on the seven day DL while they make sure that he has recovered from that concussion. In sports, it's been a big hot button issue, and rightfully so. Concussions are definitely a dangerous thing that was for a long time ignored football they've made overtures to correct that and in baseball they have as well they have a special disabled list just for concussion sufferers and Brandon Belt Adam Duvall has done very well through the Giants organization gets his opportunity to wow fans and officials at the major league level He's facing a 2-2 count here with two out and nobody on. He's going to head back to the dugout. 
That's strikeout number six for James Paxton. So I was talking about the missing strikeout power. There it is again to end the bottom of the fifth. Here's Austin Jackson leading off the sixth inning. The Mariners have one run to their name. And oddly enough, if James Paxton continues to pitch the way he does, or whoever comes in after him, if anybody does, that one run may be enough. We'll find out, though. Vogel's song still up. Curveball in there. One ball, one strike. 83 pitches through officially five innings, but here in this his sixth inning of work. That curveball barely reaches the plate. It bounces into the glove of Posey. Two one kick and delivery. Cutter high. Three balls, one strike. And this one up in the air. Playable for Pence, not a problem. Out number one. So here's Dustin Ackley. One of two Mariners to have two strikeouts in this game. The other one is Seeger. Who will be up in this inning if any Mariner is able to reach. Eckley already in trouble, 0-2. Vogel song outside, check swing. And Eckley gets a reprieve from the third base. Ump on the appeal. So here's a 1-2. This one playable in the air. So he won't come out with a strikeout, but he will fly out, and he's 0-3 with two outs here in the top of the sixth. And so here's Robinson Cano, who hasn't been much better himself. He's 0 for 2. Only three Mariners batters have been able to generate a hit. Robinson Cano isn't one of them. Fouled off pretty weakly. But Cano already in the hole, 0 2. Swing and a miss, and there's a strikeout. Three up, three down for Vogel's song. The pitches are getting up there. So is the Heat. One to nothing here in the bottom of the sixth. Back in San Francisco for the bottom of the sixth inning, Brandon Crawford will lead off the inning, and he'll have to move out of the way as the 1-0 pitch flies inside. That one was at neck level.
You can add another K to the ledger. That is number seven. James Paxton's at 83 pitches. He's at seven Ks. Six of them swinging. And here's Joe Panic back up at the plate. He's not been a victim of those strikeouts. He hit a ball weekly that was collected by the catcher back in the third. This one in play, so that'll do it for the no-hitter. And with one out, Joe Panic is on with a single. So it took five and a third before the Giants were able to get a hit. So now that that's out of the way, we'll see. If the, Mar if the Giants can make anything else of it, they'll do it against the extra hitter, Joaquin Arias. It's going to come in and pinch hit for Ryan Vogelsong, so his day is presumably done. Change up for ball one. Ball one strike here to Arias. One out. Panic on first. And the Giants will finally get their first hit. This one bounces. Four, six, three. So no offense, but they are able to get the hit to break up the no hitter. They play spoiler and nothing else. We head into the top of the seven. Welcome back to San Francisco. Here's a look at the game summary. James Paxton, through six innings, has only given up one hit. So no, so no, uh, no hitter for him, but he does have seven strikeouts. By that same token, the day is done for Ryan Vogelsong. He made it through six. And despite being dominant, the pitch count was just a bit too high. So here's Javier Lopez coming into the game, hoping to pick up with Vogelsong left off. Seager, Morrison, and Zanino all do up. And first pitch from Lopez is a strike. That one fouled off. Javier Lopez, born in San Juan, Puerto Rico but went to high school in Fairfax, Virginia and went to college at the University of Virginia. And the first batter he faces is down on strikes, Kyle Seeger. Regardless of the pitcher, striking out. He has the hat trick today and three at bats. Take a look at it again. Bring that one up. We'll see Logan Morrison, who struck out himself back in the fifth.
check swing, appeal to third. He did not go. Ball one. Javier Lopez's careers between when he was drafted and now spans three decades. He was drafted by the Diamondbacks in 1998. Didn't debut until 03, though. He is still going to this day at age 37. Birthday just passed. It was on July 11th. Morrison fouls off this pitch. One ball and two strikes to Morrison. Lopez looking for K number two. Won't get it there. Change up outside. A waste pitch for ball two. That one hit, and it just rolls its way into center field, and Lomo is on for the second time today, but the first time off of a hit. Look at it again on show track. That's the reason that it rolled a little weakly, to be quite honest, but it was low, just out of the zone, but Morrison's still able to make contact. And it pays off. And this one popped high in the air into right field. Pence is under it at the warning track. And he's able to get out number two. So Zanito, the only run to score. Can't. Repeat or retire to the dugout. Here's Andy Chavez, who's grounded out twice. He's going to look if he can do something about Morrison at first. This one will drop just fair. And Morrison is at third. And he is coming home, and it's a race at the plate. Slide, got him! What a play, and it keeps the Mariners from scoring another one. And after a play like that, you got a stretch here. Middle of the seventh, one nothing, Seattle. Angel Pagan leads off in what is still a one to nothing game. As the Giants defense was able to collect a double from left field off Andy Chavez. And throw out Logan Morrison at home. But Angel Pagan leads off with a hit. So after giving up the no hitter back in the sixth inning, it's pretty much just... Uh, it's been a free day for theirs. So after giving up the fairly easy hit to Pagan, we're going to have a double switch. So that'll be it for Paxton. And Tom Wilhelmson will come into the game. So as you may have heard, over the PA system, Kendry's Morales will come in. And he'll bat ninth. That will be, would be the second batter due up. In the next inning. This one hit right to the third baseman, and it's a 5-4-3 double play. It's 
a Wilhelmson comes in. And he'll get two outs right off the bat. And here's Buster Posey. Struck out his first time up, flew out to right his second time up. That was that amazing catch by Envy Chavez. He laid out for that one, that is for sure. But Posey's going to see if he can generate any more offense now that a fresh pitcher is in for the Mariners. Deeks at the cutter. It doesn't swing one ball, one strike. Miller, Morales, and Jackson do up in the next inning due to the double switch. But laid down might be a good one. And Posey just can't leg it out. So that'll do it. Three men up and three men down. And it's still one to nothing for the Mariners. It's getting late early. Into the top of the eighth. Another new pitcher here for San Francisco, Sergio Romo stepping up to the plate. Going to see if he can pick up where Javier Lopez left off and where Ryan Vogelsong left off. It's been a good pitching performance. Only one run surrendered between what is now three pitchers for the Giants. The problem is that the Mariners pitching staff hasn't given up a run at all. So it would be pretty hard luck if the Giants lose this game one to nothing, Giants pitcher is going to make sure it remains at just one run. Here in the top of the eighth, Brad Miller has already taken two pitches, two balls. fouled off. Full count here to Brad Miller. This pitch high in the air, right center field still carrying, and it will drop on the warning track and into the stands for a ground rule double. So here's Kendry's Morales. He will be replacing Indy Chavez in right field. He will also now be batting ninth. Doesn't go all the way around on the swing, but far enough on the slider for strike one.
This one hit to Crawford. Will he be able to make a play? He will. There's out number one. Here's a look at the pitching comparison. And as said before, it's been very a very good performance, but that one run that Ryan Vogelsong gave up at this point still looks like enough. But the Giants do on offense have two more innings to respond, so might not, not have to panic just yet. Austin Jackson to reset the lineup here for the third time today. One for three. He's flown out twice and he hit a single. However, he got a little too overzealous early on and attempted to steal second back in the third. He was caught stealing to end that inning. Jackson puts this one in play. It will drop into center field, picked up by Kagan. And this will not be a play home as it's an RBI single for Austin Jackson and it is now two to nothing as the Mariners try to add on insurance so that will do it for Sergio Romo he got one run or he got one out rather he did give up a run though he did get one so now Juan Gutierrez will come in. He will be tasked with closing things out. That Giants bullpen is now officially active. As Dustin Ackley, he of two strikeouts and a flyout, fouls off the first pitch. Pickoff attempted first. Keep Jackson honest. He was going for it on that first pitch, but actually chose to swing. Perhaps part of a hit and run here with one out. This one popped up in the air, and Jackson's going to have to stay at first. Panic's calling everybody off, even though there's no one near him. P4 for out number two. We'll keep Jackson at first. So Gutierrez gets at least one out here. Here is Robinson Cano. Jackson on first two outs. Cano is 0 for 3 today. He'll take a curveball for ball one. I don't know if I've alluded to the crowd, but it is a packed crowd. It has been a great crowd today here in San Francisco. It just might not be happy with the result. AT&T Park has been one of the most, uh, one of the best attended parks in this entire tournament. I have to check my numbers here. But the attendance has increased with every passing game. The first one against the Mariners clocked in at 33,610. That loss against Houston, 37,764. Pickoff attempted first, Keith Jackson honest he's still safe and that thriller against San Diego 41,915 against a division opponent so we'll probably be back down to that that low to mid 30,000 number but Crowd looks good today as this one popped high into center field. Pagan's going to it at the warning track and hits off of the wall. And that ball's not in his hand when he deflects off of it. So Cano brings in a, another run and he is on with a triple. 
Oh, mercy, what a hit. I thought that one was gone. But they don't call this park a pitcher's park for nothing, I suppose. I feel like there's a number of places in this league of ours where that one would have been over the fence. In terms of park factors, the Giants definitely have themselves a pitcher's park because now that it's three to one, Three to nothing in favor of the Mariners. This one fouls off. It very well could be four to nothing. Depending on which park you're playing in. But we're here in San Francisco on a beautiful night. As this one gets past Posey, he'll slide in as Cano comes in for a run. He advances in on the wild pitch. That's a wild pitch right there. Admittedly, in my time, my short time calling baseball, both at the collegiate and now, as you see here at the pro levels, I, I haven't quite gotten a grasp on wild pitches and pass balls, and apparently I still haven't. As that one looked like that should have been a better pitch by Gutierrez, but nevertheless, it is a pass ball that brings in Robinson Cano. So it is, it is now four to nothing. No home run needed. Two runs have scored in the eighth, one run scored in the seventh, one in the fifth. So after a dominant four innings by Ryan Vogelsong, it seems like all that work has come undone. This one hitting the gap. And the party will continue. Seeger is on with a single with two outs here in the top of the eighth. Mariners looking for all of the insurance which makes sense when your home park is actually named after and has the naming rights of an insurance company. Logan Morrison coming up at the plate. He just hit a single back in the down at the plate. It was a close play. It was a fun play. This one a little easier, 4-3 to leave a runner stranded. But the Mariners get two more runs here in the inning they are now up four to nothing they try to cement their place on the road to the regional championship Pablo Sandoval is struck out and he's grounded out and he's finally coming up to his third plate appearance here in the bottom of the eighth Sandoval pops this one up in the air, playable for Ackley, and he's got it. So next up here is Mike Morse. Pitch to him, played to Seeger, 5-3 for out number two. So next up here is Adam Duvall, who's standing between Wilhelmsen
that one line foul. I don't know if I finished that thought. Duvall is standing between Wilhelmson and a three up, three down inning. I, I'm not quite sure if I finished that thought. If I did, I apologize for repeating. If I didn't, I apologize for not finishing that thought in the first place. Pitch inside for Seymour. One ball, one strike. So despite giving up two hits between Paxton, well, Paxton actually gave up both. Wilhelmson is thrown hitless ball so far. The Mariners pitcher still on the verge of facing the minimum. And still on that path is Seeger. He's able to get another put out. That's three up, three down, and that did not take very long. Heading into the top of the ninth, Mariners head four. One more pitching change here in the top of the ninth inning, and it's Gene Machi. Here's Mike Zanino to lead off the inning. Gene Machi in that walk-off win for San Francisco. As the slider veers outside for ball one. He was the winning pitcher of record, and Wilhelm, as Wilhelmson gave up that walk-off home run to Mike Morse. Machi was the last pitcher up at the mound for San Francisco. So he's 1-0 here in the Coliseum Baseball Tournament. He won't end up with the decision, as far as we know, at least not in this case, unless the Giants come back in the bottom of the ninth. Which in baseball is very possible. Don't know how probable. But I'm in this game, I'm not putting anything past anybody. I'm sure that's part of the reason that we love this game so much. Another four-seamer in there. Three balls, one strike. by Zanino. And Zanino goes down on strikes to start off the inning. So now we come to the pitcher spot. Here's the double switch. It's moved up to Wilhelmson hitting. So we'll have somebody else closing out that game, presumably. Here is Chris Taylor. He got the start against Minnesota. But now he's coming in in a pinch hitting spot. Two-o count here to Taylor. to give themselves some insurance. Make it a four nothing game as Taylor strikes out on that one. So he will not be contributing to the cause. 
That is strikeout number two for Gene Machi. Let's see if he can go three up, three down. And here is Brad Miller. And this one hit right to Crawford. So no strikeout, but still 6-3. So Machi comes in and takes care of business. But it's going to be a matter if the Giants can take care of business in the bottom of the ninth. Your attention, now pitching for Seattle. Wilhelmson was pinch hit for back in the eighth inning, or back in the top of the ninth inning. So that means a new pitcher must come in. And it's Danny Farquhar. And leading off the inning, Brandon Crawford, who just made the out. Do up in this inning, and Crawford panicked the pitcher spot. As I'll be presuming that Machi won't come up to bat. Unless he has some power that we don't know about. 1-0 count here early on to Brandon Crawford. Better outside. If the Mariners are able to hold on, it will be an AL West matchup down in Anaheim. It'll be the first night game there for the Angels because it seemed that whatever day they played their doubleheader, you know, an East-West doubleheader, they played against the, the Eastern team from the Central time zone, so they had to go first instead of going second, having a 7 and 10 East. First batter is with. Farquhar gets his first out, just needs two more. Here's Joe Panic. One of two today. Finally coming up to the plate for the third time. As I said before in the previous inning, if Farquhar can hang on, the Mariners pitching staff will get out of this game facing the minimum. So it may not be a no-hitter, but it's still amazing in itself. As I said before, they got two more outs to do it. Far apart. He's going to need to hold his ground here against Panic. The two chances when that was in danger came in the sixth and seventh with singles by Panic and Pagan. But both of those were erased by double plays. Arias hit into one after Panic came up. And then Pence hit into one after Pagan came up. Far, far behind, 3-1. Panic puts this one in play, so he gets on base regardless. And this one's going to roll up against the wall, collected by Jackson. And Panic's going to try to leg out three, and he will. He is on with a one-out triple here in the bottom of the ninth. So we do come to the pitcher spot. Gene Machi, as expected, not batting. Here's Gregor Blanco, who got a couple starts in center field before Pagan came back. But now here he is in a pinch-hitting role, looking to see if he can bring Panic home.
So Mariners pitchers won't be facing the minimum. Unless they're able to pull out a very interesting double play. A double play would end this game. This one popped up, won't be challenged too far into the first level. Two one count, panic at third. Looking to come home and at least put the Giants on the board before it's all said and done. This one in the dirt, but collected by Zanina. Angel Pagan on deck. Four seamer high. And another batter walk. Only the second one on the day for the Mariners. But that's more than enough that Lloyd McClendon has seen. As the Mariners will go at least one over the minimum. As Yervis Medina will have to close things out. First batter he'll face is the leadoff man, Angel Pagan. Hunter Pence on deck. Bullpen still going here, Dominic Leone. Ready to go in case Medina can't close it out. I said before, Pence is on deck. He is the tying run. So perhaps not probable, but not impossible. The Cubs, in the very first game of this tournament, scored four in the top of the ninth to come back and beat the Tigers. This one hit weakly, though. Just foul. Just as Medina, Medina was picking the ball up. All foul. Swing and a miss. And first batter that Yervis Medina faces, he strikes out. We've seen a lot of K's today. We've seen eight from the Mariners. Medina gets his one man out, Angel Pagan. And now here's Fernando Rodney. Coming up to the plate, or coming up to the mound. Rodney at the mound, taking on runners on the corners and Hunter Pence. So Posey, who's on deck, is now the tying run. Seamer in there, one ball, one strike. Fernando Rodney has been around for a very long time. As a matter of fact, he was a member of that 2003 Detroit Tigers team that almost broke the record for most losses in a season. But he's come a long way since then. He became a dominant closer in this league, and he comes to Seattle. Where he has 35 saves, which is a league lead. And he was an all-star this year. So he's definitely made a name for himself ever since he came into the league in 2002. He had three saves in that fateful season. Not much to save. And not much to save here, but he'll still close things out as he strikes out Hunter Pence. So there you have it, folks. The Seattle Mariners. The number five seed, able to knock off the number four seed, San Francisco Giants, who just 
have not been able to find any offense in the last two games that they have lost the last two by the score of four to nothing. They're sent packing, and Seattle has a date with a division rival for a spot in the regional championship against another division rival in the Astros. So this is going to be a good one out of the West down the stretch. That much is for sure. But for now, let's take a look at this game here. James Paxton is your winner. Ryan Vogelsong, your loser. But both had very dominant games up on the map. And for that dominant game, here is your top player of the game, James Paxton. Six. Only gave up one walk and fanned seven. That's So there he is, James Paxton, your top player of the game. That'll do it for this presentation of the Coliseum Baseball Tournament on the Coliseum Sports Network. Be sure to check out the official website, simscoliseum.com. Also, like this video and subscribe to Coliseum Sports Network on YouTube. And be sure to follow Sims Coliseum on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr. So that'll do it from San Francisco. The Mariners shut out the Giants at home 4 to nothing. So Seattle is on to Anaheim, hoping to get a spot in the regional championship. Until next time, I'm Raymond Sims. Thank you for watching.